We're in Shrewsbury Library, one of the best places in the county to browse books and the best location for this edition of Your Book Show. Outside, there are statues with the inscriptions Philomathes and Polymathes, meaning lover of learning and much learning. And this week, we'll be learning everything we can about our two featured books, The Great Coat by Helen Dunmore and The Yellow Birds by Kevin Powers. The buildings at the library date back to the 16th century and used to house Shrewsbury School. And one of the school's most famous old boys is Charles Darwin. It's hard to imagine the famous naturalist as a schoolboy, and by some accounts, he wasn't a model student, preferring shooting, dogs, and rat catching to his studies. I wonder what he would have made of schoolboy blogger Matthew Swain, who's trying to encourage other boys to share his love of reading. You'll meet Matthew later on. You've been reading Helen Dunmore this week. She's rather prolific, isn't she? She's amazing. She is one of the UK greats. Uh, doesn't matter whether it's adult books, children's books. She originally started in poetry, and I just think that comes through in the language. It's so absorbing. It's beautiful. It's a ghost story, so have you been being scared this week? Not as much as I thought I would, actually. I was expecting to not want to turn the light out at night and have chills up my spine. It's not. It's strangely odd. There is a ghost. It's about a 1950s housewife who discovers a great coat, an old coat in a cupboard. And when she discovers it, there is an RAF pilot from World War II knocking on the window wanting to come in, which sounds creepy, I know. But in fact, the ghost is really lovely and the living is far creepier the landlady upstairs listening walking footsteps she's she's scary so does the plot stand up it really does one moment you're in the now with the husband in a split second you're with the lover back in time so you're never too sure which world is going to gobble her up i know i'm not going to give it away <laughs> so who's going to read this book who wouldn't read this book? It is beautifully written. You're absorbed from the first word right the way through to the end. It's a very simple read. You will gobble it up in an afternoon. So from World War II to the modern Iraq war, the Yellow Birds, Kevin Powers. Is it harrowing? Yes, yes, it is harrowing, but it's, it's very, very beautiful. I, Kevin Powers is an American veteran and he started writing this book um, two years after he came back from the Middle East. It's narrated by a character called Bartle, who's just 21 years old and he's on his first tour of duty in Iraq in 2004. And he's friends with a soldier called Murph, who's just 18 years old. And the story is really more about their humanity and their spirit rather than... Um, rather than sort of <laughs> the heroics in a standard war novel, you know. Is it quite a moving read? Yes, yeah. You know, Kevin manages to describe the experiences of war from the inside. It's like the individual inside you. And it, it's, he's a very talented poet. So that's, that's why it is very moving. And it's, well, it's more than likely why people are claiming that this book is, well, it's a modern classic along the lines of All Quiet on the Western Front, for example. Is it aimed at people who enjoy war novels? It, it, it is a war story, but it's a story more so about the burdens of their lives as soldiers and the, the horrors and the balance between the horrors of war and the beauty of life, really. Would you recommend it to someone who's never read a war novel before? Yeah, yes, I would. I would. This is Kevin Power's first book, but when you consider his credentials, you can see why he's so apt at juggling the themes. You know, he, he is a war veteran. He's a very talented poet. I think, I think it's an excellent read. It's, well, it's soaked in experience and it's just beautifully crafted. Yes, you've convinced me. I shall put that on my reading list. Thank you. <laughs> One thing that's worried parents and teachers over the last 60 years is the apparent reluctance of some boys to read books. Boys lag behind girls in the literacy tables and everyone agrees something should be done. 
Now, Matthew is not a reluctant reader, and he's found some books that he wants to share with others, and he's doing it in a very boy-friendly way. Boy Reader is Matthew's blog about reading, and it makes for some pretty interesting reading itself. My mum said, why don't you start a blog about reading? And we'd done it, we've been, we've been doing it at school at that time, so I decided to start it. Reading's really important to me because I really like it and if I was writing something at school um, um, I had these words and inspiration from all the other books. I have already, I've always been a very big reader and I really like it. In a week I might read something like two or three. Um, Sometimes I read four or five, sometimes. The thing I like writing most about is reviews of what I really, really like. One of my favourites is the Dragon Chronicles series. I think every boy should at least try the Dragon Chronicles series because it's got, it's really adventure and mystery, so uh, it ends like wondering what, what, what would be happening next. I've sent an email to prime to the prime minister, but unfortunately he hasn't got time to do the interview. He did give me his favourite book. It was called Our Island Adventure or something. Can't quite remember the name, I think it was that. When I'm older, I'd really like to be a paleontologist because I'd be able to travel all over the world. Um, maybe I might right, I might be a part-time author as well, but I'd really like to be a paleontologist. If you'd like to read Matthew's blog, you can find it at boyreader.blogspot.co.uk. And don't forget, if you've got an opinion on any book, especially one from the list in our introductory programme, please do get in touch and you could win yourself a £10 Waterstones gift card. And we'd love to hear about literary Shropshire. Maybe you're part of a reading group we can feature, you love writing, or maybe you just want to champion your local library. Do get in touch. But until then, get, get reading! reading.